Good afternoon, Assalamu Alaikum, and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ahmed Nawaz. We've discussed a lot of things on Sports Extra the past week, but now we're going on to something very special. We always try to bring you exclusive content and talk to people who have definitely made headway in their careers but have inspired generations as well. Now, we are, of course, on the verge of a historic tour of Australia. Uh, against Pakistan. The test match is going to begin tomorrow, of course, and that's history in the making after 23 years. And I guess if you look back at the Australian team, you'll always talk about uh, the Steve Waugh's, uh, Brett Lee's, you'll talk about Ricky Ponting's, you'll talk about everybody who's been, who's been involved and has been a true legend of the game for Cricket Australia. Uh, but I think uh, the lady we've got here, and when we talk about her uh, and her career, I mean, from covering sports to going on multiple platforms and working from for some major media outlets, not just in Australia, but many international as well. And then, of course, also being awarded a Spirit of Cricket Award and then covering a lot of exciting games herself, including rugby, and then shifting focus to cricket. There's a lot of things that we want to talk about. But who is this lady? I think that's the big question mark. We've got a report on that. Let's take a look and then come back. Linda Farrell, an Australian by origin, is an internationally renowned sports anchor and a freelance sports reporter. The independent broadcast media professional presently works with the US-based international cable and satellite sports TV channel ESPN in the role of a journalist, presenter and producer for its sports news website ESPN Crick Info. The young, talented and dynamic reporter has covered a wide range of sporting codes, starting from print, magazine, radio and television, earning much international national repute. She also served on sportsfan.com.australia and ABC News 24 Games moderator and worked as a host for ABC, ESPN Crick Info, The Wisdom Cricketers Almanac, Fox Sports and The Times. Joining ESPN, she gradually emerged as one of the prominent hosts in covering a match as a member of ESPN Crick Info Matchpoint on Air team. Some of her other prominent projects include Sky Sports based in the UK and the Asian Games. She is seen as one of the more established Established reporters in the Eastern Hemisphere with her humanitarian sport pieces garnering much acclaim. She has been highly commended by the Australian Sports Commission Media Awards for her reporting on blind cricket while being a three time nominee for the Australian Sports Commission Awards. Farrell was the proud recipient of the Spirit of Cricket Award by the Cricket Victoria in 2010 and continues groundbreaking work into a school and suburban grassroots cricket in Australia. There you have it. All you need to know about our guest joining us this afternoon on Sports Extra. And I, stay, I think that when you hear that title of Soul of Cricket Award, that tells you everything. So truly the heart and soul of cricket herself joining us on Sports Extra, Melinda Farrell. Hello, Melinda. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alaikum uh, assalam. Shukriya. Thank you. That's about all I can, I can say. Thank goodness this is an English but channel. But great to have you. I mean, it's so <laughs> exciting for people like me and many others who have followed cricket and it's been their passion to cover cricket and, you know, uh, in any domain of uh, media outlets or journalism. Uh, first of all, how exciting is it to be in Pakistan? I've got to ask you this first of all. <laughs> I, I can't really express how exciting it is. I, it's been such a whirlwind. Six months ago, I definitely didn't know I was going to be here. We had a really big a uh, Ashes series, as you know, in Australia over the summer. And then all of a sudden, bang, it was all really quick uh, and I'm here. Mm. So uh, having covered a lot of Pakistan cricket over the years in England and in, in Australia, uh, it's just really amazing to be here, especially b because I appreciate so much how important this series is to, to Pakistan, to cricket in Pakistan, and, and actually even to world cricket. It's, mm. it's hugely important. But talk us through your career itself. Uh, I mean, growing up, um, there must have been so many avenues to follow growing up there in New South Wales, and then, of course, a lot to follow, uh, a lot to cover. Where, where did this just instantly come from that, okay, this is what I want to do? It probably wasn't an instant thing. Mm. I guess it happened a little bit more organically. I, I've always worked in television mm. since I left university yeah. and uh, I gravitated towards sport in general. Uh, and then I, probably in Australia, you know, I covered cricket in the summer. Mm. I covered rugby league I in the winter, winter. those two yeah. sports. And, and eventually cricket was the one that I enjoyed the most and that took over. And so I was very fortunate enough to be able to make it my full-time career. So how's it been as a full-time career? I, I've seen you having a ball on television <laughs> with so many people that we've seen, you know, talk about the myths and everybody who's involved. But I think the best part about it is that you're having so much fun doing it, it makes it just more exciting. 
how could I not have fun? <laughs> I mean, sometimes I have to pinch myself and think, I can't believe I get paid to do this for a living. You know, I, I'm really fortunate. I get to travel. I get to not so much in the past couple of mm -hmm. years, of course, but I, I get to watch a game I love. Um, and, you know, the real stars, are, uh, the people who are out on the pitch. For me, I, I'm just really lucky to be able to talk about it, write about it. And uh, I, the other great thing is that cricket is a massive family around the world. Mm. So I've got some great friends who, who cover uh, cricket in Pakistan that I've met around the world. And, and it's just so exciting to be here. And right, I, I think she's being too modest. The soul of cricket, that's <laughs> what she is. So you can't take that away from her. But now, because obviously we've got to talk about the game itself. Uh, what does it mean to Australia, first of all? I mean, uh, like you mentioned that it was just of a whirlwind. It happened so quickly. Uh, when you realize 23 years of a long way to come to Pakistan, how special is this tour? Well, I, I think there's a lot of appreciation for it in Australia. I think Australians do understand how significant this is. It's been mentioned many mm -hmm. times just how long it's been since Australia has traveled here. If you listen to the players, they're very conscious and realize uh, mm. you know, that it's a really important tour. Australia haven't toured much in the past four years. This is their first away test series mm. since the 2019 Ashes in England. So that's two and a half years. So for them, I mean, they must be, but you know, yeah. waiting. Out. Yes, we're out. We're out. We're out of prison. We can go and play <laughs> Test cricket in another country. I guess the excitement uh, levels show because Manus is absolutely over the moon. I don't know what's up with him, but he looks like to be the person who's enjoying most of this tour to Pakistan. But I guess that speaks a lot. And uh, at this moment, Cricket Australia. Uh, has really stood out in terms of uh, bringing a team to Pakistan. But all of these players, Pat Cummins, Nathan Lyon, Steve Smith, uh, even David Warner, Manus, like I mentioned, every one of these individuals is so excited to play in Pakistan. That just shows us how much love for the game there is. There, there is. I, I will say Manus will be excited if he <laughs> just, you know, if you, if you put him up against the wall and gave him a bat and a ball, he'd be really excited. Mm. He, he just loves cricket so much. Uh, there, I think it was really conscious. Uh, I know that Cricket Australia were, were extremely keen to make this mm -hmm. tour happen, as were the Australian, the, the Cricketers Association as yes. well. Uh, they were really determined and they went a long way to sit down with the players and assure them that this was mm -hmm. going to be a safe tour. Everything, you know, w it was, and it was really important as well. So uh, I think that was impressed upon the players and I think they felt good about it. And, and you see, you know, it's a really s full strength squad uh, that, that has come here for this test series. Absolutely. I think coming on the back of a, a absolutely thrashing of the English cricket team with the Ashes. I think it's absolutely confidence that is coming to Pakistan. Uh, on the other hand, you've got an opposition that of mm. course has been through the rebuild phase as well. They performed tremendously in a T20 World Cup, but obviously lost to Australia. Uh, but then again, a quality opposition Pakistan has been over the years and the Australian players are pretty cautious of that approach. Yeah, they've talked a lot about uh, the, the tempo mm. of this test. And there are so many unknowns for this Australian side. You can look at the stats, you can have a quick glimpse at the pitch before it goes under covers, but they, they know that they're going to have to adapt and learn mm. very quickly. Learn, you know, they're not going to be able to leave on length, perhaps, like they can in mm. Australia. And, and they've, they've got to be able to judge the tempo. So they've talked about being able to grind when they need to grind with the bat but then capitalise if there are opportunities to push back and, and perhaps be a little bit more aggressive. So that for me is a, a really uh, sort of exciting battle and mm. just to see how the batters go up against uh, a bowling attack that's got a few injury and yeah. COVID issues, but uh, you know, Pakistan are at home. Mm. Uh, that's a so pretty big advantage. <laughs> that's a big advantage, of course, and that's where the confidence is coming from the Pakistani camp as well. Uh, but how well has, you know, Australia been through that phase as well? Because, you know, coming from a legendary team, then being put into a rebuild phase, the change of captains, everything happening. But, uh, you know, I want you to comment on the fact that modern day cricket has evolved to an extent where if you're going into alien conditions, you're more confident and more prepared than you ever were before at that times when you would probably tour the subcontinent for a team outside the subcontinent. It would be a devastating tour, very nervous. This time, these boys look really confident. That's how much the game has evolved. Well, it has evolved, and I, I guess you look to to some of the tournaments mm. that are uh, you know around the world and, and those T20 tournaments. Well, that's how a lot of them get their experience because you know, they're obviously they played Pakistan in the UAE in 2018, mm. but that's not really the subcontinent. Yeah. The last time they played in the subcontinent, any of them was tw with a red ball, was 2017. You guys won a T20 World Cup in Australia. That's <laughs> a white ball. A, wh a white ball is different, though. It, I mean, it's 
they've got some experience, but yeah. I think there's still a lot of respect for test cricket is different. So uh, I don't think they'll be taking too much from that T20 mm -hmm. World Cup. They're, They'll be very respectful. Well, we I will. <laughs> <laughs> Come out firing, absolutely. You never know, but uh, obviously phenomenal talent coming from Pakistan. Do you agree? Babar Azam, one of them. Shine Shah Afridi, the new sensation in fast bowling. Uh, he, uh, anyone who uh, watches uh, any of the YouTube stuff or mm. whatever will know that I've been really excited. I mean, yep. I've seen Shaheen Shah Afridi bowl mm. before, but I haven't seen him bowl with a red ball in Pakistan. So... I'm incredibly excited to see how he leads the attack, especially now, you know, perhaps a little bit more pressure on mm. him uh, without some of the other bowlers who are there. But I, I think he's got pretty pretty wide, broad shoulders that, that can handle that. And yeah, I'm just super excited. I want to be, you know, see what he does with, if it's anything like what he do, did with the white ball mm. uh, in the UAE, it, it's going to be incredibly exciting to watch. You know, it's fun to watch how much exciting test cricket is getting uh, right now in Pakistan with this series. Of course, we like you said, we've had a hype about uh, white ball cricket and everything involved. But it's great to see, even with the Ashes and now to this tour, uh, I love the fact that the next generation is uh, a bit savvy about test cricket. Yeah, well, I, I guess so. I, I mean, I think uh, I'm, I'm very aware too that, that coming to this country, mm. I, I take watching um, international cricket for granted I in front of me, live mm. in a stadium watching test cricket. So I, I think, you know, for, for young people in particular in this country who have never, you know, been able to, to see much cricket live, uh, test cricket live, it, it, it must be huge for them. Uh, and so while they're savvy because they're able to sort of see it around the world, we have streaming, everything's recorded these days. I, I hope there's a real sense of how special it is for everyone who gets to go there. Great news that Pindi mm -hmm. Stadium is sold out as well. Absolutely. I think that was phenomenal in the first couple of days. And then, uh, like I said earlier on another platform, that uh, uh, I got a hunch that maybe some of the tickets would be available. I checked them myself. You're not getting lucky. So trust me, <laughs> you've run out of luck if you want to watch the game in Pindi. But how... Uh, exciting it's going to be. Test cricket Australia against Pakistan at the Pindi Cricket Stadium. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. Now the Australian side, how well has Pat Cummins responded as a skipper? I mean a phenomenal Ashes victory to now leading a side. Uh, I'll be very honest, I never thought that, you know, those leadership qualities would come out from Pat Cummins because obviously we were seeing other captains with Australia. Oh, look, I, I mean, he's a fast bowler, so for Australia to really break with tradition yeah. and <laughs> go with a fast bowler, I think says a lot about how much his leadership skills are valued mm -hmm. and they have that that leadership team there you know Steve Smith plays a big part in the vice captaincy in in being able to help when when they're in the field and and perhaps you know looking out for things that that Pat Cummins you know might be have his head in actually what he's bowling mm -hmm. at the time so we've sort of seen that work really well but it's new it's a new partnership he had a very good series against England um, but it, it, this is only his second series so there's still a lot I guess for, for him. I found him more composed than I've seen any fast bowler as a captain I'll be very honest yeah. with the likes of what I've seen. He's pretty he's pretty cool, <laughs> cool cat isn't he? Yeah. He's, very, he's very calm he's really mature like mm. he speaks so well he's had some controversy to deal with since he became captain mm. with the way that that Justin Langer's yeah. exit uh, mm. sort of happened it was pretty messy but I actually think with even the way he got the captaincy when Tim Payne left in yeah. very unfortunate circumstances mm -hmm. I think he's handled those things with a real maturity mm. and he's quite a statesman I think too so uh, in all of those respects I think he's done really well for Australia so far but early days and it's going to be interesting to see how he grows into that role. Absolutely and I think he's already doing a phenomenal job I do believe that the Ashes was one such stunt but when you move on to coming to Pakistan, all the pre-hype of the series, his media talk, his messages on Twitter, I think phenomenal uh, leadership capabilities that we saw. Uh, I know all of this Australian team likes challenges and they like to you know, play in challenging conditions. But if I may uh, point out some of them, like I mentioned Manas, the way he was practicing is something <laughs> you don't see any day. Uh, then, of course, uh, Nathan Lyon, very excited. David Warner, Steve Smith. These are guys who want to take these challenges and prove to themselves and the world that they can do it. 
Yeah, I mean, you look at someone like Steve Smith, he's renowned as the great problem solver. Yeah. You know, that, that is him. <laughs> he, he is, uh, and I say this in a nice way, what you'd call a cricket nuffy, as is Manus. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, they, they really love their cricket. So uh, to, uh, for them, I really think that the challenge of being here is going to be great. And I, I do think it goes back to the fact it's been so long since they've had this kind of challenge. It's fresh. Mm. Uh, so I, I see them embracing it, really. And... And, you know, also passing it on to those players who ha don't have as much experience in these conditions. That's going to be something as well. I mean, no one has any mm. experience in these specific <laughs> conditions. Well, you're right about that. And it's, it's a fact that we see that yeah, even though people are talking that Australia is a far stronger side than Pakistan on paper, but at the same time, they've got some young talent that needs to be groomed as well. It, it, look... Being at home is a, a big leveler, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Uh, it really is. It's hard to win away, and you've, we've seen that often. Don't forget, this Australian team did just win an Ashes series. Mm -hmm. Just a year ago, they were beaten by an Indian side at home uh, that, was, that were missing several of their frontline players. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to get a real gauge on on where things are for them because they've, they've played so little cricket. They've got a really strong a settled, experienced bowling attack. Uh, they've got a batting lineup that we know can perform really well. And some of the one, some of them who have come through, like uh, Travis Head, Usman Khawaja, even Cameron Green, have really had great summers as mm -hmm. well. So, what that means here, I just don't know. And they keep saying that as well. <laughs> There's so much that's unknown, and for me, that just makes it so exciting. Mm -hmm. And Nathan Lyon as well. I think he's been. Uh, I, I listened to his uh, press talk as well. And the way he was gauging the pitch because of his experience as a curator <laughs> speaks volumes of what he's bringing. But I like the fact that he said that Manas said he could make a pitch in one day. But no, that's not happening anytime soon. So, uh, you know, a lot relying on Nathan Lyon, considering that if this track is slower and does go on to turn on the fourth and fifth day. So line's going to be the key, considering from, from my point of view, he's one of the most attacking off-spinners we've seen in this century. Oh, yeah, he is. And obviously Australia's most successful yep. uh, <laughs> uh, as well, which is, yeah, apart from obviously Shane Moore, but most mm. successful off-spinner. Uh, and I have seen at training, we've seen the part-timers yep. spend quite a lot of time bowling as well. Uh, Australia, if you you could see them very much going into this with their their first choice team that started the Ashes, but with Usman Khawaja in for Marcus mm. Harris, and if they go away from that with two spinners, I know they haven't completely decided, but you almost feel like it would s take a bit of a, their strength away from them. Nathan Lyon is incredibly dependable. They do have a number of part timers who can come in, and they have a lot of faith in their pace attack. Uh, and Nathan Lyon is, you know, he's. He's going to be really enjoying being here, although they, they're not expecting it to spin too much yeah, by too the sounds much. of it. Yeah, well, they've got their own espresso machine, a bit of good golf mm -hmm. indoors. I think everything's settled for all of these uh, Aussie lads, but it's it's good to see that all the hype and everything is there. Uh, you've been able to travel to the Pindi Cricket Stadium. Uh, yes. You've, uh, I know you had a, a hectic routine, so I must thank you, first of all, for taking out the time for being here. I know it took some convincing, but <laughs> finally, finally it worked. So uh, the Pindi Cricket Stadium, of course, a bit of weather issues now, and then we're hoping for the weather to clear and have a good test match from tomorrow onwards. Uh, but then, of course, it's Karachi and Lahore. So how are you seeing the pace of the series going? Uh, well, well, for me, it's so unknown. I mean, the, the first thing for me was it was just so wonderful to get to Pindi. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful stadium. Mm -hmm. I was really struck. It's so different to Australian uh, grounds because it is smaller. It's more yep. like an English mm. uh, venue, I think, some of the county grounds. And it's so intimate. You're so close to the the players. And so the square itself. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so close. The view from the press box, we're super spoiled there. So I'm so excited to, to just see, see and feel the atmosphere there because I, I just think it's going to be tremendous. Mm. Uh, and I, I don't really know what to expect when I go everywhere else. It's, it's also new to me. So I have, you know, lots of people, I have friends in Lahore. I have people telling me I have to have a biryani and karachis because <laughs> that's the only place to have it. But yeah, I, I'm just open to all the experiences. And yeah, but just really don't excited. limit it to biryani and just certain stuff, you know, just... Uh, there's a lot more. <laughs> I only had a chicken par parata roll today. How was it? Ah, it's fantastic. fantastic. I like spice. Yeah, sure. I like spice. So there you go. That's that's one Aussie who likes spices. So you know things are on the right direction with Melinda so far. <laughs> so that's that's good. That you know, but so much going on onto the series. Uh, 
the media in Australia right now, uh, they're writing a lot about this series as well. So what's the general, like you mentioned, that they're very appreciative of this tour, they're looking forward to it. That I understand, but what's the general feeling of the tour for Australians who are reading, of course, and watching these things on television? Well, I think they're really curious. Certainly from my perspective, the, the calls I've had from radio stations and, mm. and people back at home is, they, they want to know what Pakistan is like. Mm. Uh, because you know often a perception from outside is very different or what might be in in the media i know there was so much about the cancellation of yep. the, the new zealand mm -hmm. tour and then when england decided not to come um which was bitterly disappointing for people here so i think back at home there's always a sense of caution australians are very cautious mm. people so I, I you know i've had a lot of people being very curious as to you know what's it like yeah um, they must be asking you as well yeah yeah they yeah. are so uh, that's why it's it's great for me to be able to just come here and experience mm. it and and hopefully sort of show a bit of that to people as well and, and bring a bit of Pakistan across in whatever I'm writing or whatever videos I do so that people get a real sense of, of the reality of, of things here. Absolutely. Uh, finally, uh, would you like to give any message to so many fans of not just Stark, Warner, Smiths and Labushin and the Australian cricket team, but fans <laughs> of Melinda as well, because we've seen you've made a lot of friends now in Pindi Cricket Stadium. Like you mentioned, Lahore Karachi is also waiting. But any message to the fans who are watching you right uh, now? Look, I don't have fans. I just have friends. <laughs> fans have you. <laughs> uh, no, 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 you're not, not, not fans, but friends, part of the big cricket family. So uh, the, the, the players are definitely the stars of the show. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm overwhelmed by how much of a welcome I've had. So a massive thank you to everybody who's been so welcoming. And I'm right. looking forward to sharing the whole tour with you. Well, uh, thank you so much, Melinda. The thank you for being on the show. It was great having you and you're an inspiration. And keep on enjoying the Pakistani culture. And I'm still stuck at that paratha role that you <laughs> are. So, so thank you so much. It's been wonderful having you on the show. Shukriya. Shukriya. Thank you so much. And that was, of course, Melinda Farrell. And you heard about her career and also about the Australian tour to Pakistan as how historic it is and the game itself and how the Australians are looking forward to this challenge. Uh, in our segment recap, we've got to tell you all about this. We were in an exclusive uh, talk with Melinda and we discussed all of the factors regarding the tour itself and also uh, Melinda's career as a cricket journalist as well. Uh, like she mentioned that it's taken her places. She's enjoyed every bit of it. And I think uh, the fun part of it is when you, you know, love what you're doing. You, we always say you don't have to work a single day of your life. That's how much you enjoy it. So it's been great having her as well. And I do think that the entire Pakistani fraternity is so excited to have her and the likes of many other journalists around. It's, it's truly great for the game itself, a game that we all share and love. Time now for a short break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.